Come on, can you give the Lord praise in this house? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Paul said, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Always. Amen. Even when it's 100 degrees outside, we are to rejoice in the Lord. Truly, it is good to see you in the house of the Lord. Truly, God is amazing. Somebody say, Lord, you are amazing. Come on, just tell him that he is amazing. Amen. If you have your word, turn with me to Joel. Joel chapter 2. God had spoken to me last night as your pastor was speaking. Uh, the Lord just gave me some fresh manna from heaven. He just spoke into my uh, being uh, for tonight. And we're just excited to just bring forth this word. And uh, as you're turning there, let me also say thank you so much for the food today. And uh, just thank you for all of your hospitality. It is truly to good, be good. It's truly to uh, good to be here, to be with my children, my wife, uh, my my mother-in-law, father-in-law. Now I I, I told them, uh, you know, we were talking about teasing about the other day because they call me their son, and they say it all the time. They say, well, he's not our son-in-law; he's our son. I said that's just wrong. They said why? I said that means I'm married to my sister. <laughs> We are from Kentucky, right? You know, so. <laughs> Thank God I live in Florida, right? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Amen. But it is good to be amongst family. It's good to be amongst friends. We are all brothers and sisters in the Lord. I do pastor in the state of Florida. My wife and I, we planted a church eight years ago. And truly, God has blessed our church. Uh, we started out with 13. This past Easter, we celebrated Easter with 670 people. And God is truly moving in the state of Florida. Our church is very diverse. Uh, we have a very uh, diverse church. I have people from Romania. I have my my. I have musicians from the Philippines, from Guatemala, from Puerto Rico. I have a. I mean, I've got them from every every place you can. Th I've got Haitians and Jamaicans, and I've got everything you can think of. Uh, and, and and I I get to eat good, man. I I eat curry chicken. I learned how to eat with my fingers. I I, I mean, it's just good stuff. And, and but there's nothing like. Uh, the home now today's oh that was home cooking oh my goodness it would make your tongue smack your brains out it was so good it was so good and we're just so blessed uh, to be here tonight okay so Joel chapter 2 uh, verse 23 I'm going to be reading out of uh, English standard version bible uh, my, my father if he was here he would not be happy with me he always just told me he said preach from the King James Version and I've had my King James Version, but it had a flat tire on me. And I've got it in repair. So I've, had, I've got it in repair. I've glued it and hot glued it for a number of years, and it's just on the brink. But uh, praise God, amen, for our English Standard Version. But I like, I like a lot of things that, that uh, uh, this version says. But here in Joel chapter 2, verse 23... The Bible says, Be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for He has given. Do you know that God is the giver? Come on now. We could just stop right there and the presence of the Lord is already at moving here at this place. We could just stop right there and know that God, you are the giver and we are the receiver. But the Bible clarifies this here that He has given the early rain which is the former rain for your vindication and he has poured out for you the latter rain that is the abundant rain he said the early and the latter or the former and the latter as before he said the threshing floor shall be full of grain the vats shall overflow with wine and oil and he said I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten away he said the canker worm the cat the pillar, the palmer worm. He said, my great army which I sent among you. 
And then we truly know that he said that you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never again be put to shame. I like that right there. I like that right there. You see, we are not to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the Lord confirms right then and right here forever that we shall not be put to shame again. He said, you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Do you know that God is here tonight? Do you know the Holy Ghost is already at work where two or three gather together? He said that I am there and he is here tonight and he said, you shall know that I am in the middle of all of you here tonight and that I am the Lord your God and there is none one else and my people shall never again be put to shame and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon some people it shall come to pass that I'm going to pour out my spirit just on these four young men right here that's not the word that's not what it says is it and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh all flesh that means you and me. That means your children and your grandchildren. That means your cousins, your nephews, your auntie, your uncle. That means everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. Hallelujah. He said, your sons and your daughters, they shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Uh, he said, even the male and the female, the servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, saith the Lord, and I will show wonders in heaven and on earth. He said, blood and fire and columns of smoke. He said, the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon to blood, before that great and awesome day of the Lord that comes comes uh, he said and uh, somebody say and uh, and it shall come to pass that everyone somebody say everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved shall be delivered uh, shall be healed uh, shall be uh, what God uh, deems you to be in the name of Jesus let us pray Father we thank you so much for your word we pray now God that you will give us an ear to hear and a heart to receive this message that you've just given us today, Father. And we pray this all in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people say, Amen. And my prayer tonight, as I have experienced this now Sunday morning and Sunday night, you have something very special here that's going on at Full Gospel. And I'm so excited to be here. And my prayer is simply this. Lord, rain on us. We need the rain of the Holy Ghost and fire like never before. Oh, listen to me. We need the rain, the former rain and the latter rain. We need the rain of the Lord in this place tonight hallelujah now being in Florida I've realized that we have a little bit of a rain shower every day every day I was, I was telling some of the Camp Wilson folk when we brought the kids up here about a month or so ago it rained every single day and little Eden and some of the kids they said is this what Illinois is like said does the sun ever shine in this place we've got to go back to the sunshine state just to get flood some sun and surely it, it didn't shine. I don't think it shined one time, did it, Pastor Brian? I don't think it did. And so then we come back up again. And sure enough, as, as my name is what it is, we crossed over Tennessee and came up through here. And as we crossed over those great, that great Mississippi and the great Ohio River, sure enough, I saw it. Dark clouds coming all in. And they looked around. I looked back and they were just, oh, just gloomy. I mean, it, it just rained and rained and rained. But I thought about back in Florida about a month ago or about a month and a half ago, we had a period about a week or two with no rain. No rain, 100 degrees weather, your grass turns brown really quick. And, and my grass was ground, and it didn't, matter, it didn't matter what I did. I mean, I turned the sprinkler system on. I saw my water bill go up. It didn't matter what I did. That grass stayed brown. But you have one rain, one rain that comes on that grass, man, it turned green. Yeah, that's what rain does in our lives. It refreshes, it renews, it revives the grass gets greener, the trees
trees grows larger. Rain refreshes, refreshes the, the land. And I'm here to tell you tonight, we need a refreshing. I, I, I don't know about you. Let me say, I need a refreshing. I need a renewing. I need a reviving in my spirit tonight. Oh, listen to me. There comes a time in every person's life, in your life, and in my life, just as we experience the two days of drought, just as California has been experiencing many days, many days of drought, there comes a time in your life, in my life, that we go through droughts. Spiritual droughts, if you will. There comes a time when you read this word and it seems like it's Greek. Uh, you read this word and you think, my God, what are you trying to say to me? There comes a time in your life when you pray and you feel like your prayers don't penetrate the ceiling. There comes a time when you think, God, I'm here. Have you forgotten about me? Oh, listen to me. I'm here to tell you there comes a time in our lives when we feel like we have a drought of health where it seems like there's no end of our physical problems. There comes a time when we feel like we have a drought of finances where it seems like more bills are coming in than money's coming in. There comes a time in our lives when we feel like we have a drought of occupation, maybe even in your marriage. Maybe you're going through a, a period of drought where you feel like you've lost that love loving feeling whoa whoa that loving feeling come on but what brings back that loving feeling come on what brings back that that health what brings back that joy what brings back that 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 we have the pep in your step let me tell you there's only one thing it's not a pill it's not a prescription it's not a liquid it's 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 god almighty it's an outpouring of the holy ghost and fire tonight hallelujah hallelujah Amen. Sometimes we go through droughts. We sometimes we go through droughts where it feels like our spiritual bean patch is kind of slim. <laughs> you know, slim pickings, if you will. Amen. Sometimes I feel like an old dried up raisin instead of a nice plump grape. Uh, sometimes, you know, come on now. How many are you here with me tonight? Uh, are you here with me tonight? Don't you get tired of just going through these times? Don't you get tired where you go through more droughts than you do outpourings? Oh, am I preaching to myself here tonight? Uh, don't you get tired of dealing with the same old, same old? Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Mm, hallelujah. We need some new life poured into us tonight. We need a fresh anointing pouring into us tonight. We need a fresh cleansing. We need some showers of blessings, showers of healings. We need revival that is anointed through the power of God that can make a difference in our dying world, in our dying bodies. We need the rain, both the former rain and the latter rain tonight. We need a spiritual outpouring. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Now, what was it about the former rain? Now, the former rain, it came to Israel after, after they just had planted the seed. You see, as a, you, you, this, is, this is farm country here. And, you know, of course, we've got technology. We've got those big spray machines. We've got all that kind of stuff, irrigation. But they didn't have that kind of thing. So they needed the former rain. They needed the former rain because once they went out and planted the seed, they needed nourishment. You see, just after they dropped it, after they covered it, the rain was desired. Oh, I'm going somewhere here with you. I'm going somewhere. You got you to stay with me. You got to stay with me. Just after they dropped it, just after they planted it, the rain was desired. The rain was desired to wash it into place, into that perfect place in the ground, that perfect will of God to where it would grow, to where it would flourish. They needed the Holy Ghost rain because without the rain, the seed simply dried up and produced nothing. 
Oh, and I believe here tonight, I believe tonight that there has been seed planted. There's no doubt that you've had seed planted or you would not be where you are now. Come on, church. Uh, come on, church. Uh, uh, there is no doubt seed has been planted in this place for many, 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 many of years. Uh, and you are here tonight, tonight to know that truly seed is being planted and the word of God is being planted. But I'm here to tell you without the outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon the word that's been planted in you, that word will quickly leave you. Why do you think God sent the Holy Ghost? Think about this. Think about this. The word is the seed. And the seed has been planted. But without the former rain, without the watering of the Holy Ghost, without the, 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 the um, saturation that the Holy Spirit brings us, that word will dry up. I'm preaching to you something different because this goes all against denominationals that, that say, oh, we don't need the Holy Ghost because they just speak the word. But without the Holy Ghost, there is no word. Oh, without the Holy Spirit of God, there is no word. Why? Because in the beginning was the word and the word was God. The word was with God. He was in the beginning. He is the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Without an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, that word that's been planted, it quickly, it quickly is dried. It quickly is gone. It vanishes uh, after the message is preached many times throughout the, 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 the services of America. Uh, people, instead of, coming, uh, instead of coming to the altars, they go the opposite direction. Listen, I, I believe in altars. And I know you believe in altars around here. It blesses my heart, Pastor. It blesses my heart to see these young men and young ladies around here, to see each and every one coming, oh, rejoicing. I was over there. I was like you. I was ready to explode. He hit, listen, he began to blow that show far. And I was like, oh, sound the trumpet. Blow the alarm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, let me hurry. I don't want to keep you. Oh, my, my, my. Hallelujah. Somebody say pray for that man. <laughs> oh, how many give me five? How many give me ten minutes? Can you give me ten? Somebody just raise that. Me, Come on, who's going to give me ten? Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy. I got all kinds of time. All kinds of time. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see the seed has been planted. All right? Come on, now the seed's been planted. They prayed for the former rain. The former rain come, and so, so the seed began to grow. You see, after the former rain has fallen, it is now time for growth. So now the seed takes root. It begins to grow into the place where it breaks through the crust of the ground. Oh, hear me tonight. <laughs> it forces its way into the light of the sun. It then takes something. It then takes something that is so prophetic, that is so uh, uh, just astonishing. It takes power from the sun and uses that power to produce a life nourishing, a life giving, a, a life uh, supplying force that nothing, no grow light, no artificial flavor, no artificial preservative, nothing can give it. And friend, I'm here to tell you, it's a very simple to Nessa message tonight. We need the S-O-N. We need the sun's power in our lives to overcome this world that we're in. You see, the same power that rose Christ Jesus from the grave is the same power that dwells. That dwells in your body, in my body, in your body, in your body.
body. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave is the same power that dwells in you and dwells in me. And God said with this power that we can overcome. With this power we can lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. With this power. I can do all things. Somebody say all things. I can do all things through Christ Jesus with this power. Power to speak as I said yesterday. Power to prophesy over these dry bones that I shall not die but I shall live and declare the work of the Lord. Uh, Is anybody here tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody tell somebody power. Power. Hallelujah. Power to live. Uh, Power to move. Power to be. Why? Because it's in him I live and move and have my being. Somebody give God praise. Come on. Amen. Now that's just the former. (laughs) That's just the former rain. Oh my God, my God. That's just the former rain. Amen. That, that's what the outpouring of the former rain does. That's what the outpouring of the Holy Ghost does. The Holy Ghost waters the seed. Amen. Waters the word. He then leads us. Whew, he leads us to a pre-established place. Oh, you didn't get that. You'd be shouting all over the place. You are not here by accident. God has a divine appointment for you to be here tonight to hear this message preached because after the former rain has landed, the Holy Ghost will take you to that pre-established place. Think about the plant. Where does it grow? (laughs) Where does it grow? Come on, it grows up, up out of the ground. We used to sing an old gospel song. It says, I'm going up, up, up to be with Jesus. I'll be changed in a twinkling of an eye. Oh, hallelujah. Don't get me singing, right? Amen, amen, amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost. Listen, listen. He leads us to a place where God has pre-established us to work and to grow. Why do you think it's so important to be involved in a church? Now, I'm going to be a pastor to you right now, okay? Is that all right, pastor? Let me just lay some ground for you here. I get to leave Wednesday. That's why it's so important for you to be involved in your church. That's why it's so important for you to be planted in your church. That you are, this is where you receive your your food. This is where you receive your power. This is where you receive uh, the word of the Lord. It's so important to be involved and planted, uh, to be be a, a member in good standing, if you will. So important, so important. That pre established place to be, to become productive to get rooted, to get anchored in Jesus. Do you know why we need to be anchored in Jesus? Because we all go through storms. Think about this now, church. Come on. You go through storms, I go through storms. You go through through depression like I go through depression. You say, oh, I don't get depressed. Sure you do. Everybody goes through a little bit of depression. You do. What's the difference between us and the world? (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. We have the Holy Ghost. Oh, you say, what makes the difference? The Holy Ghost. You go through uh, sickness just like the people in the world. What makes the difference for us? The Holy Ghost. How are you going to build a church? What makes the difference? Oh, you're starting to get it. They're starting to get it. Come on. Listen, you have children just like I. We have worries of tomorrow. But what makes the difference in our children's lives? The Holy Ghost. My, my, my. Listen, when we are involved in this outpouring, when we are involved in this this former rain, 
The Holy Ghost and fire. It, uh, uh, it will anchor us. It will anchor us. It will deep root us in the ground. We are established and we get deeper and deeper into the word of God. We become more productive. We get to reach people. It is a great thing to see God pouring out his blessings on me. But it's a greater thing when those blessings begin to overflow from me and pour out on others. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't get so rooted or discouraged, uh, you know, that, uh, that you're not being blessed like your brother. Amen. Focus on, as Pastor Morgan said yesterday, focus on right here first. All right, focus right here. Take care of this, this person here first. Amen. Allow the Holy Ghost to work on you. Amen. And then, and then those things will take place. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? That's what we are to do first. And then everything shall be added unto you. Listen, we are living. If you do not know this, let me remind you. We are living in a spiritual wasteland. We're living in a spiritual wasteland. Uh, uh, and so let me remind you this as well. And some people, they give up, they quit, they throw the towel in. They, they, they don't see where they need to, what they see, or they don't feel what they need to feel, you know. And, and I love what Pastor Morgan said even last night is we can't go by that feeling. All right? You know, I, it's a lot like my sister Melissa and I, I love her, I love her to death. I do, I love her to death. You know, but when we do marriage counseling, we, our number one thing we tell young marriages is you can't go by your feelings. Because if she went by her feelings, she would have killed me a long time ago. <laughs> Don't be quick to say amen. Amen. <laughs> so we can't give up. Listen, hear me tonight. Don't give up on your reign too soon. Don't give up. I was reaching a point when my yard was like it was for two weeks. Now I live in a, 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 a deed restricted neighborhood. And in my deed restricted neighborhood, uh, if you want to paint your house, you got to get approval. I, it, it just makes me mad as can be. I cut down a tree the other day and got in trouble for cutting a tree down. And, 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 then, and, then, and then a guy, was it last year, my, my yard turned brown. We had a, a drought for about a month, and this guy came around writing tickets. I, man, I got mad. Uh, I wanted to lay my hands on him and not pray for him. Just get out of here, man. We ain't got a drought going on. And so, so that was going on, you know, and, 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 and I saw the two, the, 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 um, the two weeks of what it was doing to my lawn and no rain. And I, I began to get a little desperate and I began to turn my, 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 um, my sprinkler system on to every day. That's not, that's not the thing you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be conservative. It's every two, you know, every twice a week on uh, whatever it is. And, and I got a little desperate. I wasn't waiting on the rain. So, so hear me today. Don't give up on the rain too soon. Oh, listen, that's a good nugget for you. Uh, someone mentioned Elijah. Elijah, I think it was your pastor yesterday mentioned Elijah. Seven times, seven times he went, uh, he sent his servant to go look to sit to the sea and see if the rain was coming, to see if there's anything up there. Seven times, somebody say seven times seven times but do you know the Bible does not tell us what Elijah was doing can I tell you what I believe Elijah was doing Elijah was praying for rain oh you didn't get it <laughs> Elijah was praying for rain he was praying for rain. Oh, listen to me. He was praying that the rain come. He's no less persistent the seventh time than he was the first time. And there was no evidence the rain was coming. Uh, so let me tell you, don't give up on your rain. Oh, hallelujah. Never give up on your blessing. 
Never give up on your children. Never give up on your marriage. Never give up on those things. Amen. Rain is coming. Look at your neighbor and say, rain is coming. Rain is coming. Keep on keeping on. Never give up. Number two, let me hurry. Amen. In between the former rain and the latter rain was the growing time. That was the growing time. Now, depending on your crop, it's a lengthy period of time. I was talking with Pastor Canada and we were talking about the corn last time. You know, we were talking about the corn, the soybean, and, and the period of when you sow it and when you reap it, what that period was. Now, depending upon your crop, that's a lengthy period of time. It's, it's a time of, of, of really, it's a hard time. Because you've got to get out there. You've got to work it. You've got to weed it. You've got to till it. You've got to put some back into it. Come on now. Come on now. Nobody said it would be easy. I remember one time we were ministering in Paducah, Kentucky. And there was a little lady. Remember her? I don't know if you remember her. You're going to remember when you see this. She got up there and she began to sing a song. She said, I'm wrapped up, tied up. Tangled up in Jesus, wrapped up. You remember that? Oh, my God. She started tearing that song up. I mean, you start, it was kind of like the jungle book. You just couldn't just kind of start a bounce. Oh, wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in the Lord. <laughs> oh, and she got up there. She said, I'm 82 years old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging for bread. She said, I just can't believe that God brought me this far not to help me. Oh, listen, I know it's a hard time. I know sometimes you go through those droughts. I know that sometimes you go through those times of, of indecision. I know that you have some concerns tonight. And I know that the enemy comes during those times. Come on. He comes during those times when you are laying on your back. He comes during those times when you receive that bad report. He comes during those times, uh, oh, listen to me, when you're weak, when, when someone has maybe hurt your feelings or, or maybe something has happened. He comes in those times, he says, oh, I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this to distract them and detour them and then damn them. I'm going to use this. But let me tell you tonight, oh, what the enemy meant for evil, God's going to change it around for good. Because God is a good God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He comes to steal. He comes to steal the seed, the seed of joy, the seed of peace, the seed of trust, the seed of love. Sometimes the storms of life will come in, will come in and rip the ground that you've been working on will rip the ground that you've been tilling, will rip the ground that you've been cultivating. And I'm here to tell you, I can think of many people that have fallen during the storms. I can think of many people that did not survive the storm. You did run well. What happened? Sometimes there are droughts of doubt. There are droughts of fear. And we dry up because maybe we lack attention. Pastor, I came Wednesday and you didn't even recognize me. Pastor, I can't believe you didn't call me when I went into that in and out procedure. You should have called me. Come on. I'm there. I get it all the time. All the time. All the time. Pastor, my sister's brother's nephew's cousin just went in an automobile accident and you wasn't there. I'm leaving your church. Sometimes the canker worm will get at the roots. Sometimes the caterpillars start chewing on those beautiful 
green leaves. Don't mess with my leaves. Pastor, you can preach on anything, but you better leave my leaves alone. <laughs> well, you got quiet on me now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friend, listen to me. If you will just hold on. Hallelujah. If you will just hold on. Hold on. I'm here to tell you tonight, the Lord of the harvest is going to show up and show off and deliver you and take you through when you thought all hope was lost. When, when you were ready to give up, to give in, to give out, to throw the towel in. When you could not take the drought any longer. Here came the former rain and the latter rain together. That was your time to shout. That was your time to rejoice. Because the latter rain, when the latter rain comes, it begins to bring blessings. When the latter rain comes, you know harvest is nigh. When the latter rain comes and God is pouring out his spirit on all flesh, you can look up because our redemption draweth nigh. Hallelujah. Oh, listen to me. If we will just hold on. Somebody say, hold on. Hold on. God in his great mercy and provision for Israel, for you, for me, he sent the rain just in time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Oh, he's an on-time time God listen he is never late he's never early he's right on time and he's here tonight somebody give the Lord praise hallelujah hallelujah he came just in time to make that produce into an abundance he came just in time to bring forth fruit for the harvest he came just in time to make that plant life flourish he, he, he came just in time to make your marriage thrive he came just in time to make that body not die but live today why because the bible says he's the giver we're the receiver he's a, listen he's the first and last he is the beginning he is the ending he is the keeper of creation he is the creator of all things he always was he always will be he always is he is unmoved he is unchanged he is undefeated he is never ever ever undone he is the former reign he is the latter reign he is everything in between can you give God praise hallelujah hallelujah I just got to believe tonight I, I just got to believe in my own spirit tonight as God was telling Israel He's saying to us tonight, rejoice, rejoice, shout for joy. The enemy has been defeated as our sister already sang the song. The enemy has been defeated. Death and hell have been defeated. Your sickness has been defeated. The problems you go through have been defeated. Luke 21, the Bible says that when these things begin to come to pass, look up and lift your head for the redemption draweth nigh. God is already at work pouring out his spirit amen and here here at this place there is such an anointing. There is such an outpouring and as we draw near in these last great days uh, just before the harvest just before the coming of the Lord just before the splitting of the eastern sky I can't help but believe that God is getting ready to reign on us oh somebody say Lord rain on me tonight oh I don't know about you but I'm hoping for some rain I'm looking for some rain I'm expecting some rain tonight not just on me but on my family on my church on the community we need the rain tonight our churches need the former rain and the latter rain the former rain and the latter rain together can you give God praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as I'm closing and the family and the, your praise team comes back to this podium, James chapter 5, 
says Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. The Bible says he prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he began to pray again and the heavens gave rain and the earth brought forth fruit. Now, if I'm going to come out of this valley, if you're going to come out of this drought that you're in, if you're going to come out of this place of desolation, well, you've got to have faith. But you've got to have faith that God can take the smallest of things. <laughs> that God can take the smallest. Listen, don't spy, despise the small things. <sighs> don't despise the small things. We were, we were in Mexico one time. 14 year old little girl never walked in her life. Never. Her legs were this big around. 14 years old. We went there and my guy told me, he said, don't go in their house, don't eat their food, and don't drink their water. I looked at him, I said, well, what am I doing here? He said, I'm just trying to protect you, Bishop. I said, okay, all right, uh, that's fine. I had a little lady that came tugging at my jacket. And she began to speak to me and through my interpreter she told me about her 14 year old daughter. Her 14 year old daughter that she had never walked in her entire life. I just couldn't take it no more. I said you take me to her. You take me to her. And sure enough we went in and we went in her house. There was maggots. There was flies. There was gnats. There was lice. There was everything you can think of, uh, uh, just a detestable smell. And I looked over in the corner, and I saw that little 14-year-old girl. She was over like this. Her hair was over top of her. And the mother hollered at her little girl and told the little girl that I was there to pray for her. And she tried to get her little head up, and she threw her head like this, and she looked at me. And as she looked at me, I knew right then and right there that God was going to touch her. Oh, that God was going to touch her. I got on my knees and I grabbed her little feet and I began to pray in the name of Jesus. I began to pray in the name of Jesus. And I asked my interpreter, I said, how do you say Jesus? How do I tell her to say Jesus in Spanish? And my interpreter said, all you got to say is De Jesus. And I looked at that little girl, and I'm on my knees, and I'm looking at her, and I said, baby, De Jesus. De Jesus. And she began to say, Jesus, Jesus. And I grabbed her little feet and I had my armor bearer lift her up and I began to move her legs. And as I moved her legs, she began to say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. It was like the song we were singing, Yahweh, Yahweh, Jesus, Jesus. It's a universal language. Hallelujah, Jesus. And before you know it, that little girl that never was Walked in 14 years, begin to walk and talk. They had Jesus, they had Jesus, they had Jesus, and the limbs on her legs begin to grow. The muscles on her legs begin to grow. The tendons begin to. Grow. They begin to grow. They begin to grow. Don't sweat the small things. If you take one step, he said, I'll take two. You draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to you. Oh, God is in the house. This is an outpouring. Somebody say, let it rain. Hallelujah. I've got to close. I've got to close. But just before I close, oh, hear me. Hear me because God just spoke to me as I was sitting right there, right there. 
as they were singing and as I sit right there the Lord began to speak to me and the Holy Ghost took me to Amos in Amos chapter 9 verse verse 13 the Bible says behold the days are coming declares the Lord when the plowman shall overtake the reaper oh this is so prophetic right now I'm just going to prophesy right now over this group because you you got to understand when he said the plowman is going to overtake the reaper oh come here brother let me use you for a minute all right you're going to be all right the plowman I want you to hold like this and you're just going to walk okay I'm going to walk real slow come right here okay now this is what he's saying this is the man that is taking and, and tilling the ground He's going he's gonna to till the ground and we're going to plant the seed after him. Now how many knows what the reaper does? Come on now. He reaps the harvest. But what happened between the time of the sowing and the reaping? Oh, you're not getting this or you'd already be on your feet. There's coming a time. <laughs> There's coming a time when the outpouring is taking place. When the outpouring is taking place. And this man is sower. He's plowing. The Bible says that the reaper is going to overtake the plowman. You know what that means? That means that God's going to pour out so many blessings that he's not going to have enough time to plant the seed start, to start walking. I'm going to overtake him. I'm going to say to me if you have just a little bit of spiritual life in in you tonight put it in the hands of a big God if you have a little bit of finances in you put it in the hands of the one that can do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think for according amen to his riches and glory if you only have a little bit of health oh listen to me tonight I want you tonight to come up because we're going to lay hands on you we're going to pray the prayer of faith and we're going to put it into the hands of a big God Jehovah God oh hallelujah the Bible says and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain somebody say great rain that which had been held up for the past three and a half years was finally released. Oh, hear me tonight. You might be looking at your situation in your life and all you see is nothing. Mm. I just don't see it, God. I don't see it, even with my new glasses. I don't see it, Lord. You might be going through a situation right now where you just don't see yourself coming out of the valley. You might be going through a situation right now where you just don't see yourself getting the job that you need to have. You might be going through a situation tonight right now that you think, oh, that companion's never going to come. Oh, listen to me. The Lord spoke to me time and time again. You climb the hill and you search, but you don't see nothing. Come and time again. The Lord says, climb up that mountain. And you say, Lord, I'm tired, but you do it anyways. You do it anyways. You go up there and you look and you see nothing. Oh, God has brought me by just to tell you tonight. Amen. The Lord has said to you, amen, to get ready, to get ready, to get ready ready because it's going to rain revival showers Holy Ghost power that thing that had been held up in your life oh thus saith God is about to be released oh hallelujah oh there's something taking place around here there's something taking place around here. Come on, will you stand to your feet? Somebody say, Lord, open the floodgates of heaven and let it rain. Let it
and reign. If you've got financial problems, I want you to come. If you've got health problems, I want you to come. We're going to get some of this oil and we're going to anoint you in the name of Jesus. If you want to give your life to Christ tonight, I want you to come. If you want to stand in the gap, if you want to stand in the gap, if you want to feel the hedge, I want you to come.